Hassan, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Thank you for having me. So I was very interested in the research that you were doing on behalf of Nasiha. Can you tell us a little bit about the findings? Yeah, so uh, back last year, uh, in summer of 2018, Nasiha created a research and community outreach team. And uh, me being a summer intern on that team, we wanted to find out topics that were very pressing in our community. And so we went through Nasiha call logs and we saw that uh, issues that kept coming up were substance abuse and self-harm in the community. Mm -hmm. And those being taboo and stigmatized subjects, we thought that we wanted to gauge the severity of this issue in the community. So what did you find when you did your research? So we found that um, contrary to to what most most people Muslim, would expect yeah yes. what most m Muslims think that there are there is drug abuse in in our community that is fairly consistent with the rest of Ontario and uh, self-harm practices and behaviors are are very very much similar mm -hmm. although we might not think that or see that it's, mm -hmm. it's I have to admit I was really surprised when I saw those results because yeah. you know it's almost half so almost half of the people that you surveyed said that they engage in substance abuse oh, yeah. and yeah. self-harm exactly. so that was surprising to me and at the same time these individuals were also saying look I'm, I'm religious religion is important or you know very important to me mm -hmm. yeah they were they rated religion as being very important mm -hmm. or most important in their yes. life. And many of those people were also living at home too. So, yeah, exactly. You know, they had that parental support. Yeah, with their families or their spouses or mm -hmm. whomever. So why do you think? Why do you think Muslims are engaging in those uh, behaviors? Um, most, I feel like Muslims are engaging in these behaviors because we're, we're just like no, normal people. It's not like we're any different. We have the same stresses and pressures that everyone faces. So the fact that we're Muslim doesn't necessarily um, you know, shield us from mm -hmm. these same issues of self-harm, drug abuse, and using these as, as crutches for many, you know, uh, mental disorders that mm -hmm. people might have. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about um, substance abuse. What sort of drugs were people using? So on the survey that we sent out, uh, we, we made a list of uh, substances such as alcohol, marijuana, tobacco, prescription drugs, uh, hallucinogens like shrooms and uh, we had that up on the list and we found that the most used substances were alcohol, marijuana and tobacco mm -hmm. which naturally that follows normal trends mm -hmm. in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. And what were the reasons people were giving for why they were using these substances? Uh, so a lot of reasons, the top two reasons being of uh, curiosity, curious as to you know, what is it like? All my friends are doing it. Um, another reason being friend use. Mm -hmm. um, their friends and peers are doing it, mm -hmm. whether Muslim or not. And uh, other stresses included um, like peer pressure, uh, family pressures, so, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Let's talk about self-harm then. Mm -hmm. uh, what sort of practices were people engaging in? So um, the, the most common practices that uh, we recorded on our survey were included cutting, hitting, uh, scratching. These are so self-harm behaviors that people exhibit. Mm -hmm. And it was fairly consistent with um, Canadian, Canadian statistics. practices. Yeah. yeah. Were there any reasons provided for why Muslims were engaging in those practices? Yeah. Uh, so just like for the drug abuse question, we also listed a couple of reasons that, that, uh, that Canadians reported using. And so those included uh, guilt and shame, um, you know, family pressures, uh, things that normal people have. Mm -hmm. So tell me about, you know, you've mentioned guilt and shame a few mm -hmm. times, family pressures. Tell me about how that could impact people using, let's say, harming themselves or using drugs. Um, so especially in, in our community, these are topics that people don't necessarily want to talk about mm -hmm. or really air out, you know, at home. It's like, don't use drugs, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> and that's it. Yes. So, you know, when they do something that they've been taught they're not to, a lot of Muslim youth don't necessarily know how to, to deal with it. And this can then lead as an outlet into self-harm practices or drug abuse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what do you think the solution is? Do you think that we need to, you know, remove this sh the shame and the stigma associated with these behaviors? Yeah, for What's sure. What's the way forward? Uh, just to create an environment where where us Muslim youth are are open to talking about these issues, mm -hmm. saying that you know I'm feeling this way, you know what 
can I do about it instead of keeping everything you know, kind of superficial, passive at home, mm -hmm. um, you know, parents or uh, community leaders, um, not just, you know, saying no drugs, but saying if you're in the situation, how would you go about saying no? Mm -hmm. Or how would you go about, you know, seeking help if you are in, in this problem? Mm -hmm. What sort of community structures or, or social structures do you want to see there to, to, to deal with this problem? So, uh, yeah, so uh, currently in place, you know, if someone were to 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 have uh, self harm or drug abuse problems, uh, they could um, in in the Muslim context you can go to the imam mm -hmm. and you know, for counseling. And there are a lot of qualified imams that have been through the proper training that can then handle these problems. But there are then again there are some that aren't. So what I would like to see improved are um, more accessible platforms for the youth to use. So for example, Nasiha is starting um, a text, um, a, a text line to yeah, deal with I these problems. That, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So for uh, kids, kids can text in, can talk, um, ask questions. It's accessible, it's quick, it's anonymous, and it kind of um, takes away the shame or the, or the guilt that they might have to say something in person. Mm -hmm. What sort of future work uh, do you intend to do, or, or does Nasiha, Nasiha intend to do, um, to research this, pro this problem a bit more? Yeah, so the survey that we did was just to gauge the severity and where more attention needs to be um, put to. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, we'd, we'd focus more on um, in, maybe on self-harm in, in specific or drug abuse in particular. Where, you know, are these drug... Um, are these the drugs consumed cultural? Like a lot of the time, like shisha, doha, those are, you know, very cultural things. Mm -hmm. and, people, and social situations. In yeah. social situations, mm -hmm. yeah, and people, you know, get addicted to it through that. Or um, self-harm, having, um, seeing what these stresses are or the pressures are that, um, that are leading to these behaviors and how we can create a more inclusive environment where these things are talked about and aren't, Stigmatized, mm -hmm. and it, it, it will take time. But with you know, with proper effort, it, it will come. You mentioned you mentioned in the article that there were different ethnic groups that were using different drugs or engaging in different practices. Can you speak about that a little bit more? Yeah. So uh, we, uh, in our survey, we asked you know where, uh, where certain people are coming from or what their ethnicities may be, and what drugs uh, they were using. And a common one that we did see a lot was you know was shisha, shisha, shisha. And Doha, from you know, it's very um, uh, popular and it's, uh, a social thing in a lot of mm -hmm. Arab communities, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people view this as a problem and something that you know they don't have control over. So it would be interesting to see where that plays in in the that cultural setting and how we would go about. And dealing with that. Hassan, thank you for joining us on the show. You've done really important research and I hope to see more of your research coming out on Perfect. similar topics. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.